Dear Madam High Commissioner for Human Rights, Dear President of the UN Human Rights Council, Dear Members of Parliament, Distinguished Colleagues from the Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, I wish to extend to you all a warm welcome. I also wish to thank the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights and the Commonwealth Secretariat for their collaboration in organizing this event. These are extraordinary times and the fact that we are meeting virtually underscores this reality. It is precisely in times of crisis that we should remain vigilant to ensure that human rights and checks to state use, the use of state power are respected. It is in this regard that parliaments have a strong role to play when it comes to ensuring stringent oversight of government actions. I am pleased that this seminar will look at mechanisms that can help address the situation and the role of uh, parliaments in addressing the human rights ramifications of state efforts against the COVID-19 pandemic. You will also devote significant time to discussing the work of the UN Human Rights Council, which under its universal periodic review, examines the human rights situation of each country every four and a half years. In fact, this seminar places strong emphasis on the UN Human Rights Council in the belief that parliaments can make a strong contribution to its work. It is also an opportunity to reflect on the notion that the Council stands much to gain from such parliamentary involvement. Now, why are parliaments so important to the Council's work? Parliaments can help ensure that what the Council does is fully connected to national realities. Human rights are not technical matters and should not be left in the hands of government representatives and experts alone. Human rights often require tough political discussions and decisions. The political component is therefore inevitable. Parliaments can help promote public debate on human rights and seek input from all segments of society. Moreover, they can lend democratic legit legitimacy to the outcome of that debate and galvanize public support for implementation. How does this translate into concrete parliamentary input into the work of the Council? Parliaments can take the lead in critically reviewing the draft reports that the Executive has prepared for submission to the Human Rights Council. Parliamentarians can also see for themselves how representatives of the Executive present and defend their report before the Council. Such direct exposure helps them to better understand the concerns that the Council expresses and facilitates subsequently an informed debate in Parliament. Once the Council has adopted its recommendations, it is critical that they are brought back to Parliament and seriously discussed because they often require legislative action and budgetary resources. The recommendations are also very useful in that they give parliaments a concrete tool to hold government to account for their human rights performance. Parliaments play a critical role too in turning the reporting cycle into a continuous one. Countries only report every four and a half years to the Human Rights Council. There is a risk that in the meantime its recommendations are neglected Parliaments can therefore ensure that recommendations remain on the agenda by asking the executive for yearly progress reports. Ladies and gentlemen, what do we hope to achieve with this webinar? Let me mention two concrete outcomes. First, we hope that this meeting will lead to a better understanding of the human rights challenges facing us at this time of crisis and of the work of the Human Rights Council and its universal periodic review 
as well as the UN Human Rights Treaty bodies. Second, it is our hope that the webinar will lead to a stronger contribution of members of parliament to the three different stages of the Universal Periodic Review. We hope that the presentation of several national case studies of parliamentary involvement in the UPR can serve as an inspiration to other parliaments. Moreover, the third session of this webinar will look more closely at the UPR recommendations for each participating country with the aim of hearing from participants how they wish to commit themselves and mobilize their colleagues to seek implementation of these recommendations. In doing so, it is important as well that participants reflect on how they can enhance cooperation with other stakeholders, including your national human rights institution and civil society. Ladies and gentlemen, we are confident that this web webinar will help bring the international human rights protection system a little closer to home, which is where human rights matter ultimately. Indeed, the yardstick for success is the extent to which the human rights discourse has led to concrete improvement of people's lives. The IPU is fully committed to working for this purpose with you and your parliaments. I wish you a very successful meeting and thank you for your attention.